Archaeologists employ a number of different methods. They broadly include research, field work, laboratory analysis, and dating methods. However, understanding these methods requires not only understanding the relationship of archaeology to history, but the problems with the methodology and their assumptions. The problems and assumptions of the methodology being used in archaeology can and do affect results. This is one reason why understanding the methodology being used in archaeology is important. Understanding the methodology that is being used in archaeology makes it possible to analyze individual claims rather than just assuming they are accurate. Archaeology is an historical science, but not the same as history. Archaeology and history are two different disciplines that use different types of evidence to interpret the past. Archaeologists use artifacts, and historians use documents. Both approaches are equally valid, but each has advantages and disadvantages. Relating artifacts to people can be difficult, and most artifacts can be interpreted in different ways. Furthermore, documents cannot always be taken at face value because accounts can be exaggerations, misrepresentations, and even out and out lies such as history revisionism. Studying both documents and artifacts is often useful, but interpreting artifacts only through written evidence is considered bad practice. Discounting an historical document based on an apparent disagreement with archaeological evidence is also bad practice because such disagreement could result from an erroneous interpretation of one or the other. Contrary to what you see in movies and video games, archaeologists do not spend their time dodging traps in ancient temples and tombs looking for artifacts. In reality, before doing field work, they spend a lot of time doing research about the site and the culture being studied. Also, field work seldom involves dodging traps in ancient temples and tombs, but usually involves excavating at the site being investigated. Since excavating a site is somewhat destructive, preliminary research helps an archaeologist decide where to dig and even if digging is needed, since avoiding actually digging at a site preserves it intact for future work. Despite what is seen in movies and video games, field work usually does not involve archaeologists dodging traps in ancient temples and tombs. Nor do archaeologists just go about digging at a site with shovels or backhoes, though they do sometimes use such tools depending upon how deep they go. There are several ways archaeologists do field work. Some are non-invasive, others are mildly invasive, while others are heavily invasive. Some non-invasive methods include aerial photography, ground penetrating radar, contour survey, physical survey, and field walking. Aerial photography looks for patterns on the surface that indicate possible buried ruins and other artifacts. Ground penetrating radar is used to find possible buried artifacts by looking at radio wave patterns created by changes in materials and density. A contour survey measures height lines to locate buried structures and earthworks. A physical survey locates standing buildings and earthworks detectable from the surface. Field walking involves looking over a site to locate artifacts for the purpose of collecting and plotting their positions to study distribution patterns. Excavation is usually preceded by surveying and marking off a grid on the ground so as to be able to record where holes are made. While digging, archaeologists keep careful records of where artifacts are found, and when dealing with layers where artifacts are, they do the work carefully so as to not destroy artifacts. This can involve sifting dirt through screens to find small artifacts. Excavations are sometimes done by small round holes, and other times by large, square, well-marked holes. The process of digging often involves not just looking for artifacts, but actual stratigraphic layers that are not only used to help data site, but can indicate things such as fires and other events. Fieldwork is at the heart of archaeology, but it is more than digging holes and exploring ruins. Laboratory analysis begins with cleaning artifacts, a process that needs to be done carefully because many artifacts are fragile. Next it, next, it is labeled with information about where it was found, including the level and location at the site. They are then grouped into groups of similar artifacts. It includes comparing style of artifacts for dating purposes. It further includes chemical and isotopic analysis to tell what the artifact is made of, as well as various dating methods. Radiocarbon dating uses the decay of carbon-14 to date organic samples. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years, limiting its potential dating to at most 100,000 years. Any organic sample a million years or older would have no carbon-14, yet carbon-14 has been found in coal, oil, and even diamonds. 
Dendrochronology uses tree rings to date wood samples. It is most accurate when dating living or recently dead trees. Theoretically, tree rings can be matched to those of living trees projecting back even further. However, the matching of tree rings can be somewhat subjective. Not only can trees near each other have differences in their ring thickness, but the ring thickness can even vary within the same tree. Thermoluminescence dating is used to date crystalline material like pottery. It uses a weak light signal produced by trapped electrons resulting from ionizing radiation, so it is proportional to the dose of radiation, such that age equals the total dose divided by the dose per year. Thermoluminescence dating requires a zeroing event, such as heating above 500 degrees Celsius, which is why it is useful for dating pottery. In some cases, thermoluminescence dating can be as accurate as being within 7 to 10 percent, but in other cases, it can be as high as 40 percent. In any case, it requires making assumptions about the dose rate, such that any unaccounted for change in the dose rate will affect the accuracy of the results. Archaeomagnetic dating uses a comparison of the magnetic orientation of iron particles with past locations of the Earth's magnetic poles to date a sample that has been heated to over 650 degrees Celsius. To date a sample by this method requires knowing where the Earth's magnetic poles were in the past. This means that it is not an independent dating method, but that it must be calibrated by other methods. Archimagnetic dating also requires that the sample not have been disturbed since the sample was heated because the physical orientation is critical. So, archimagnetic dating can only be accurate when the sample has not been moved since being heated and a date can only be determined for the orientation of the Earth's magnetic field by samples of known dates that have also not moved since being heated. Rehydroxation dates ceramics by the amount of water absorbed by the pottery since it was fired. When ceramics are fired, the heat drives out water and reheating it removes water absorbed since it was fired. The rate at which it absorbs water can be measured so as to calculate how long it took to absorb the water. The main problem with this method is that it requires knowing the average temperature of the ceramics. If that estimate is wrong, so is the resulting date. Ceration dating is the process of dating artifacts based on how they change over time. The idea is that different sites can be seen as dating from about the same time based on similarities in the style of artifacts. This method provides only a method of relative dating. It needs a reliable chronology to get an absolute date. The obvious difficulty here is that if you try to apply an absolute date to serration dating by way of an erroneous chronology, the resulting age will be wrong. Serration dating seems to ignore the fact that pottery from earlier periods could be found at a younger site, and that potters or other artists could reproduce earlier styles. In both cases, unless such artifacts are surrounded by contemporary artifacts, a site could be misdated. Stratigraphy dates artifacts based on the layers they are found in. This system of relative dating is highly dependent on other methods of dating to get an absolute date. It assumes that artifacts in lower layers are older than those in higher layers. While sometimes artifacts in lower layers are older than those in higher layers, this is not always the case. In flowing water, several layers form at the same time such that downstream artifacts in lower layers are younger than upstream artifacts in higher layers. This means that in some cases such relative dates are erroneous. The methodology of archaeology is clearly not without its problems. One problem they all face is the fact that the further back in time you look, the less evidence has been preserved. This is a natural part, not only of normal decay processes, but of the accidental, even deliberate destruction of artifacts in archaeological sites. Not only that, but in all cases, there are simply variables that cannot always be accounted for. Furthermore, all of archaeology's methods rely on other theories to produce results. While this theoretical interdependency is not always a problem, it means that the accuracy of the results are dependent on the accuracy of the other theories. The methodology of archaeology is important to the accuracy of results. Being in historical science, archaeology and its methodology are highly influenced by philosophical assumptions. The methodology of archaeology also has to deal with the fact that time destroys evidence such that the further back you look, the less evidence survives, and the more it is influenced by philosophical assumptions. Most of the methods of archaeology have flaws that can harm the accuracy of the results. 
In evaluating claims made by archaeologists, it is necessary to understand the methodology and assumptions used. Understanding the methodology and assumptions used by archaeologists helps one to avoid accepting claims made by an archaeologist on blind faith.